I'm here on day one of RSA with Jamie Butler and Peter Silverman, both of them at Mandiant. Today they gave a talk on um, memory analysis. So how is malware evading static analysis? Um, basically, malware analysis right now is evading it using a number of different techniques. Um, the first being uh, compression and obfuscation together, where they'll compress the binary down so that the instructions that you actually get out of IDA are the unpacker stuff, and then they'll obfuscate the unpacker stuff. So there are a lot of different ways to trick IDA in a different false disassembly. And a lot of them actually have been publicly documented, and a lot of them have been discovered by the malware guys. And so we'll see them using these tricks um, to fool IDA, and then you will also have the issue of not having disassembled, disassemblable code in the actual pack uh, part. So those are the, the, the common ways we see malware uh, affecting static analysis. Okay. And today you guys introduced a new tool here at RSA. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's what was called Memorize. It stands for Memory and, and Analysis. So it's a freeware tool that you can download. And it's the culmination of about two years of research on and off in which we boil down all our techniques to do physical memory analysis and we put it into this tool to help do um, malware analysis. And basically, the benefits of this, where Peter talked about hacking and obfuscation and so forth, well, malware doesn't often do tricks when it's loaded in memory. So we can use Memorize to pull down the physical pages that represent the malware and therefore uh, overcome any anti-debugging, anti-virtualization techniques that the malware may have. And once we get it to disk, you can then you know, run your own algorithms against it. You can load it in IDA Pro as in the unpacked, unencrypted, unobfuscated form, and so on and so forth, to do your advanced analysis at that point. So it's a pretty powerful tool. We wrote a GUI to um, help you use it as well, and that GUI is called AutoViewer, and both of those are available at mandate.com in the software and free software section of our website. And this software is pretty relevant today. Um, you mentioned in the talk that you wrote it a while ago, and yet it's able to handle malware that we're seeing fresh and new? Yeah, so um, the tool that Jamie had talked about was called Memorize, and that's what we have freely available. The tool that we demoed today is called Find Executable Code. That tool is not um, publicly available right now because it's still in the resource research phases due to runtime and lack of them. Um, it just needs to be more robust in its testing. But basically the idea is that to identify executable code um, on memory sections that we acquire. So we'll acquire all the heat and all the stack for a process, and you want to know that there's nothing that shouldn't be there. So determining that there's no executable code or determining that there is executable code. And we wanted to approach it in a way that was generic. So we said we need a generic algorithms or algorithms in this case to determine, hey, this is uh, you know executable or this isn't executable. And the algorithms were generic enough. I wrote it in uh, October of 2008. Um, demoed it in 2008 and didn't touch it again uh, yet. Uh, it's it's sat with the same code base and I just uh, on a whim got Configure. We did some memory, we played around with it in memory because Configure does a lot of memory stuff and infects a lot of stuff in uh, memory process wise with threat injection. And so we wondered, does the tool still work? And, and the answer is yes. And that sort of validated that the algorithms we use um, will work um, against new malware because the characteristics of injected code don't change just what it does. Um, so, you know, the tool, there's two tools, one that we demoed that we hope to put into Memorize uh, in the coming, uh, you know, in the future, and then one that's freely available right now, which is Memorize. So. Great. So the benefits, one last thing, the benefits of Memorize are twofold. Basically, malware is not looking down, or it's looking down, it's not looking up. And by that, what we mean is it's looking at its presence on the file system, its presence in registry keys and so forth, and it's trying to hide and obfuscate those facts. But it doesn't look up and look at the memory that it's running within. So you can find things like strings or open file handles or different open mutexes so that it doesn't reinfect the host. All these things are very obvious if you start looking at memory, and that's what Memorize will help you do. So it will identify the suspicious for you. And then if you want to take that a step further and actually acquire the malicious or suspicious process from memory, we can pull it down with Memorize, and then you can run any algorithm you want against it or use your standard disassemblers and so forth like Ida Pro against it. You don't have to you know, play the tricks of anti-reverse engineering. Now you have it in its 
unencrypted, unpacked, unobfuscated form uh, because we pulled it out of memory. And, and one, one good example that I think the audience is going to be familiar with is K-Log is a rootkit that was uh, released three years ago or so. Um, it's open source, so you can get it on rootkit.com. Um, and it is a kernel keylogger. Uh, and its characteristic is, you know, it's in the kernel, it's very well hidden, but when you look at and if you infect the machine with K-Log and then you look at it with Memorize, you run Memorize on it, you'll see the system process has a file handle to C colon K-Log.txt. And that's a pretty good indicator that your system process is doing something you don't want it to. And your system process uh, represents all the drivers they run on their system process. So, you know, the fact that the system process has a file handle to a very suspicious place just goes to show you that looking at it in memory, you know, K-Log is very good at hiding itself on disk, things like that. But you know, it has to log the keys somewhere, and where it logs the keys is very easy for us to detect. Great. Well, thank you, Jamie. Thank, thank you, you, Peter. Thank you.